everyone and welcome to this, a brand new series on my channel, GDDV100, Game Theory 1. My name is Kasanis. Guys, this series is going to be the asynchronous lecture portion of a class I'm teaching at Centennial in the fall. The course is entitled GDDV100, Game Theory 1. In this first video, guys, all we're going to be doing is taking a look at exactly what GDDV100 is. We're going to start with a course introduction. This is going to go over our agreement, exactly what you'll be learning in this class, and what you should expect as far as outcomes are concerned. Let's start with a course description. This course will introduce game design concepts including mechanics and systems, narrative, flow theory, and level design. These concepts will be explored in the context of an existing game. Dungeons and Dragons. Students will produce basic documentation and gameplay through the creation of a five-room Dungeons and Dragons one-off event. Students will have the opportunity to explore game design and the iterative process through the use of several in-class practical exercises. Now if you look up GDDV 100 Centennial, this is the course description you will see. All I've done is read it off to you. And basically what this is suggesting is that we are going to be using Dungeons and Dragons as a base to explore a lot of the different theory in game. We're going to look and see exactly what a mechanic is, exactly what a system is. We're going to understand how your player experiences your game and what makes it a good or bad experience. We're going to take a look at that through flow theory. Dungeons and Dragons is an excellent example of a game that includes a lot of different aspects. In Dungeons and Dragons we have character, we have character building, we have narrative, we have level design, uh, we have a, a huge, several books that include all the mechanics and the rule set for Dungeons and Dragons. So we're going to be using that game as kind of a jumping off point to explore what game in general means. It's also a great way through a five-room dungeon, so some type of one-off adventure uh, that you're going to create. It's going to really give you an opportunity to create an experience for your players, right? That's the, that's the goal of game, is to create an experience. We're going to take a look at what the definition of game is throughout this course as well, because a lot of us work, with, work in games, uh, a lot of us play games, but not a lot of us can actually define what game means. And we'll take a look at that in much more depth as we move forward in this, in this particular series. So we're going to be doing that. Now, I also mentioned here that we'll be doing practical exercises, and we absolutely will. In fact, if this wasn't a COVID remote year, uh, what you'd be doing is practical exercises in the classroom. Every week, you build for me a brand new game out of a, a bunch of odds and ends that I've put together, a kind of toolkit that I put together for you. You'd, you'd build these different games each week based on an idea. I might give you a mechanic. Uh, uh, some type of doomsday uh, countdown clock or something like that, or I might give you a, a particular game aesthetic uh, that I want you to explore, and you'd build me a board game. Now, during COVID, during isolation, during remote teaching, we can't do that. So this year, what we'll be using instead is Tabletop Simulator. You'll still be building all of these practical games. You'll still be prototyping them and iterating your games, uh, but you'll do so through Tabletop Simulator. What follows is the course learning outcomes, and the course learning outcomes are basically an agreement that we have, the school has, my program has, with you, the student. If you have worked hard in this course, then we suggest you will be able to reliably demonstrate certain abilities. These five abilities is what we think you'll be able to do once you are finished this course. Develop a strategic and methodical approach to game and level design. Define elements related to game design and game theory. Define and utilize various game design methodologies. Create narratives, characters, and plot points to articulate the game's story. And lastly, work collaboratively to complete group projects and participate in group critiques. Once you've completed this course, as long as you've put an effort into it and you've worked hard, you will be able to do those things. It's a really, this is a basic game theory course, but you will be able to do all these things. I'm not suggesting you will build a great game when this is over, but you will have an understanding of methodologies that will help you build that game. And you will have an understanding of game design theory that will help you build an, an interesting game. And interesting is not even the right word for it. In fact, we're going to get into the proper words that we should be using throughout this particular series. 
Whenever I start to teach a new course, I like to discuss my teaching methodology. And in this particular year, it's different. Uh, normally, we would go through and we would have a lecture of some kind, a live lecture. Uh, we would include discussion of some kind afterwards, and we would have take home as well as in-class assignments. Now, this year, a COVID year, it's going to be different. In fact, this year, I'll be exploring what's called a flipped classroom. And I love the idea of a flipped classroom. So in my opinion, this is an opportunity for you as a student. This is an opportunity. I think it might actually lead to a better education, in all honesty. And what I honestly think that if this works out well, I'm going to continue to follow this particular idea as I move forward in my career as well. So what is a flipped classroom? A flipped classroom is when I present material to you asynchronously. So I'm going to, in this particular case, present you with videos. And these videos are going to encompass the lecture material for the entire course. And I'm going to give this to you and allow you to learn it at your own pace. You'll be able to watch these videos over and over again if you need to. You'll be able to fast forward through my ums and my ahs and whatever you think is boring if you really want to. And that's great. You will be responsible for your own learning. And that's big for a student. To be responsible for your own learning is, is really big. I'm providing the material and it's up to you to kind of absorb it. Now, what I'm planning on doing is offering everything asynchronously. So if you are not in my time zone, for an example, uh, you are somewhere else in the world 12 hours different than I am, you will still get 100% of the material that I'm going to teach. After you've absorbed this material, I'm going to present an online discussion. So again, it's going to be asynchronous. There's going to be a discussion board that I create. You will go into the discussion board and you will put in your ideas based on whatever question it is that I've asked you to explore. Now, that's going to be the asynchronous portion of my course. That's what a flipped classroom, I'm, I'm presenting you this information asynchronously. The synchronous portion is going to allow me then to, to dive deeper into the ideas that you have as students. I'm going to use the online discussion that you've already participated in to launch an asynchronous discussion. So we are going to be talking together. Myself and my students will be talking together over whatever ideas they've presented. We're going to explore those ideas in depth. It's going to give you, I think, a more in-depth education uh, than we normally have, in all honesty, because we're going past just the basic ideas and into these deeper concepts Maybe something that's bothering you. Maybe maybe something that you, you have questions about that weren't covered in the material that we're going to be able to cover through our synchronous portion. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. After our synchronous discussion, every week you are going to have a an assignment that is due. Uh, some of these assignments will be only take you an hour or so. Uh, there are going to be a lot of practical prototyping examples that you're going to be doing uh, through Tabletop Simulator. And then you'll have some longer take-home assignments as well. So, for example, the final assignment is going to be to create a five-room dungeon. All right, awesome. It's important to note that Game Theory 1 is the first of four courses that you will take at Centennial. Four of your Game Theory courses, one through four. And this first one is really just an introduction. It's designed to familiarize, your, to familiarize my students with game design concepts, with terminology, with ideology, uh, that type of thing that, that are going to really ground their game design experience, their game design education. Uh, it's, it's, it's going to progress with each of the next courses as well until it culminates into a final capstone game. So in Game Theory 1, we, we really take a practical approach to, to game design. So it's about the theory. It's about understanding the theory and understanding what goes into a game. That's what it's all about, is understanding what makes up a game. And by using a game like Dungeons & Dragons that encompasses so much character, level design, narrative, uh, so much. Uh, there's mechanics, huge systems that define exactly how this game works. By using this as a base to jump off from, it's going to give you as a student a, a real opportunity to explore an existing successful game and understand exactly what went into it. So that's really what we're trying to do here. That, that, final, that final adventure that you create uh, by creating that one-off adventure, you're going to be exploring it. I'm going to choose several of the students in the classroom to not only present their final game, but to actually do a play test of their final game. They're going to run through the adventure with their fellow students as characters. And afterwards, you guys are going to present to me exactly what you think, exactly what you learned about that existing game through a presentation of some kind. All right, I, I, this is going to be a great course, guys. I'm really excited. 
So let's start by talking about what we're going to do each week. And if we take a look at our weekly progression, I've really just got I've really just got the main titles here. We're going to be exploring a lot more than this every single week. Week one, we'll start off with a course intro, and you're doing it right now, so congratulations, <laughs> you're already moving forward. We're also going to start to look at exactly what a, what is a game, what does it mean to say I, I play game, or what does it mean when we define game. We're going to take a look at that in our first week. After, in week two, we'll talk about design thinking. Week three is flow states and immersion. Week four is narrative. Week five is character. Week six is quest and week seven is level design and pre-design. Week eight, we're gonna use as a jam week. And what does that mean? This is gonna be something new. If you are a student of Centennial, you've been here before, you've been in my program for a while, uh, and you're still taking first year courses, that's a little scary. But <laughs> across the board, what we're gonna be doing in on week eight is we're gonna be holding a jam week. I'm going to allow for mixed teams of first, second, and third year students. I'm gonna mix these teams, they're gonna be randomized. And we're gonna have an entire week where we jam. We're gonna build a game. We're gonna remove any uh, type of academics during that particular week. Uh, we are going to move on and, like I said, just build a game. Each team is going to build a game based on a particular idea that I put forward. And that's it. At the end of the week, you guys will present your games. It's going to be really interesting. Uh, I, I'm excited about doing this. It's going to really allow you guys to, to work in the different cohorts. So the first, second, and third years all working together with different experience levels. Uh, the more mature students and the students who've been around a longer are going to have to really step up and, and, and aid the students that are in the, the earlier grades. But I don't want you dismissing them. I want you to ensure that they are an important part of your team and that they are participating and learning from the things that you already know. That's what our game jam week is going to be. It's gonna be awesome. After that, we're gonna continue with level design diagrams to maps. We're then gonna move on to discuss the idea of game loops, progression mechanics. Week 12 will be a play test session of your final Dungeons and Dragons game. So in week 12, you guys are gonna have the chance to actually play test your game. I'll choose particular people to be the dungeon masters. And lastly, in week 13, you will be doing online presentations of exactly what you learned in your particular adventure. What did your players learn? So let's take a look at your assignment list. And this is not just gonna be a list of all the assignments you have. I mean, it kind of is. Uh, there's gonna be more to each of these assignments, but it's really gonna be where you get your grades from for this particular course. We're gonna start off, our assignment one is going to be world building. We're gonna define the world that you want to create for your final Dungeons and Dragons module. What is different about your world? Where does it take place? We'll talk about world building, obviously, in, in one of our upcoming videos. Assignment two is gonna be character design. It's gonna be worth 15%. And in that particular, <laughs> in that particular uh, assignment, it's not gonna be design your characters for D&D. What it's going to be is you're gonna take a number of psychological tests uh, and after you are done those tests, you're gonna end up with the results of you as a person. And afterwards, you're gonna design yourself as a character in a video game. So it's, it's a little bit larger than just design any character. It's going to be you in a video game. It's worth 15%. Assignment three is discussing quest and narrative. So it's worth 10% and we're gonna really have to break down what does it mean? Why are the players within your, within your Dungeons and Dragons module, why are they adventuring? You have to give them a reason to do what they're doing. You have to define for them what they're trying to do and you have to give them a reason to do it. So they really have to have an understanding of, of what's driving them. That comes to character spine, so understanding what drives your character. It's involved in world, so what is your world all about? There's a lot that goes into quest and narrative. Assignment four is your level map. Now again, this leads to your D&D, your final D&D adventure. And what I'm looking for, 15%, what I'm looking for in that particular assignment is for you to finish the actual map, a proper map of your level. I'm not looking for all the descriptions of each and every room or anything like that. What I'm looking for is a properly designed map that is taking into account metrics, that is taking into account gameplay and everything else, but it is only the map. Assignment five is a five room dungeon. It's worth 10%. You're gonna take that map that you've done. You're gonna take that world that you've built. You're gonna take the characters that are involved and the quest and narrative that you've created. And you're now gonna fill out the adventure. That's what I want you to submit here, worth 10% of your grade. There is an assignment six that's worth 5% of your grade and that's playtesting. 
this is the opportunity to play test the games. Now, not all of you are going to be playing your, your dungeon. Only some of you will. We can't let everyone play them because there's just not enough time in this particular course. But we'll choose certain students. We'll break you up into teams, and we'll have four players move through one of the dungeons. You know, uh, different groups. Several different groups, each playing one of the dungeons. It's going to be worth 5%. So the players and the DM will both get 5% for basically participating and taking notes about what they've experienced. Now, below that, we've got prototype exercises. This is going to be group exercises where you guys build prototype games every week in Tabletop Simulator. There's 15% for your asynchronous discussion. So I'm really expecting a lot inside of this asynchronous discussion. I want you guys to go in every week and participate in that discussion. You'll receive grades for participating and putting in intelligent arguments. I don't want it to be uh, any type of, of argument. Uh, I want it to be an intellectual discussion, not an argument, all right? Lastly, there's 5% for participation in Jam Week. I'm not going to grade you on how well your game turned out. In fact, jams are not about that. Game jams are an opportunity for you to fail, to try something new. And if your game doesn't work, but you try something new and awesome, you're going to get your 5%. Let's talk about the expectations for this flipped classroom. Now, in a flipped classroom, I do expect you guys to participate. I do, partic I do expect you guys to participate in the asynchronous portion of it. It is your responsibility to complete your asynchronous studies. That's it. You're going to have to watch the stuff on your own. It's going to be your responsibility to participate in the asynchronous discussion. It's going to be your responsibility. This is kind of a, this type of learning is interesting because it puts a lot of onus on the students. I'm giving you the material, and afterwards I'm going to support you 100% to make sure you understand it 100%. But you are going to have to drive yourself. This self-learning, is self-paced learning is, is great to allow you to kind of learn at your own pace. So that's really what we're expecting. I'm expecting you guys to work well in groups. You're going to have to learn to do that. Your groups might be across the world. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll work together on ensuring that your groups are able to work together in this, in this COVID time, uh, in this remote time. But your groups are going to have to be able to work together. So make sure that you are on friendly terms with everyone in the class. <laughs> All right, guys? Because so, you might very well be in a group and dependent on that person for your grades afterwards. All right, guys, that is the it for this course. That's really what we've got for this course. I'm excited to teach this class, this, this course. I'm really excited to teach this course. Uh, I think it's going to be great. I'm really looking forward to, to working with you as students and taking you on this, this first journey into what game really is. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, if you're not one of my students and you're watching this, awesome. You know, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, if you're just if you're out there on YouTube and you're watching this for the first time, you're just exploring what game is, uh, then this is going to be an interesting course for you as well. But it's really designed for my students. It's really designed for them. The asynchronous portion, which you're watching right now, is good stuff. But most of the learning, I think, is going to occur within the synchronous portion of these classrooms. Anyway, guys, regardless of whether you're my student or not, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know down below with a thumbs up. And if you didn't, a thumbs down is perfectly fine. Talk to me in the comments. Let me know what you think of this type of course. If you're my student, I don't care. <laughs> you got to watch these. This is, this is the asynchronous part of your course. You have to watch these videos. If you're not my student, I'd still like to hear what you have to say, though. Honestly, I'd like to hear what you have to say about these ideas. Have some discussion in the comments. Uh, I am not going to participate in the same way. I'm not going to go in and, and answer a lot of your questions about, about the learning that you've done here. Uh, that's what you get when you actually come to Centennial. Uh, but I would love it if, if you are not in my class and you participate in discussions right down below in the comments. All right, guys. Thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below, and if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.